This is going to be the Mark of the Beast Part 3, and we've been going through this subject, really explaining it to help the people understand the Mark of the Beast, the number 666, the number of his name. And these things really are to be understood in a spiritual sense. It's not that they can't and won't be manifested in the literal physical world in some type of physical way, but Really, the true understanding of it is in the spirit and how it applies to us spiritually. So we've been reading from the writings of J. Preston Eby as he has been explaining this spiritual mark, this spiritual mark of the beast, and also understanding, spiritually speaking, having our Father's name written in our foreheads. It really speaks of the difference between the carnal mind and the mind of Christ, the sin nature and the divine nature, mortality and immortality, and so on. So let's pick up where we left off reading from the writings of J. Preston Eby, and he has been explaining this idea of buying and selling, that you can't buy, sell, or trade unless you have the mark of the beast. So let's see how to understand this spiritually speaking. There is a pattern in the book of Revelation that shows that the first use of of a word establishes the use and meaning of that word throughout the book. In this case, the first use of the word buy is with a spiritual application. To buy and sell means naturally to engage in the ordinary pursuits of life and to exchange one item of value for another. If the purpose of the whole vision in the 13th chapter of the Revelation is spiritual, then applying this as a symbol on the spiritual plane reveals that those without the distinctive mark of the bestial system have no more recognized standing in the carnal church systems than men who are not allowed to buy or sell have in a community. If one in a particular business has his license revoked, he then has no authority to buy or sell in that industry. In like manner, if the church systems of man do not put their stamp of approval upon your life and ministry, you have no authority or standing to deal in spiritual things within their precincts. Thus, selling as a symbol spiritually indicates the dealing out of truth, the ministering of the things of the Spirit of God, while buying typifies the acceptance of truth, the receiving of the things of God, regardless of the personal cost. And is it not true that a man of God walking in the Spirit of the Lord and in the blazing light of heaven's revelation, independent of all the man-made organizations, creeds, methods, and programs of religious Babylon, will not be allowed to labor among the church systems after the truth for which he stands becomes known or until he should take their mark upon him by joining himself to them. And if he holds meetings in the community, the members of the churches are often warned by their leaders against buying, receiving from this ministry because of his not having the mark or name of the beast. Their ministers are specially marked, for they come trained out of their theological seminaries with the stamp of their respective doctrine and traditions upon them and a license from the sect to engage in its ministry. And those not thus marked or designated have no place among them. Even if there is not much difference in their beliefs and practices, still a Methodist minister cannot pastor a Baptist church, nor can an Anglican priest say Mass at the Roman Catholic Church. You must bear their mark. Whether a man is a man of God with a heaven-sent message matters nothing at all. You must bear the mark. Some of the Lord's people bring a few of the old concepts and ways over into this kingdom walk keeping just enough of it alive so that it enables them to still buy and sell with the folks in the religious systems. Then some of us are just radical enough to make a clean sweep of it all. This also reveals the manner in which the beast causes those who will not worship the image to be killed. 
an analogous killing, namely an ecclesiastical cutting off, an excommunication or a repudiation, the absolute refusal to either buy or sell the things of God with you unless you take upon you their mark. So let that sink in. That makes sense spiritually. The mark of the beast. Remember we said it's a spiritual mark that you take in your hand or in your forehead representing everything you do, think, or say. And it's a carnal way of thinking. The carnal beast nature. The carnal mind. The ways of this world of the worldly Babylonian system. And their system, yes, they have politics and they have religion and they have economics in their system. And they want it done a certain way. And that's the only thing they'll recognize. But when the spirit of truth comes, it separates. It separates you from that mark of the beast. And then it separates them from you unless God gives them ears to hear. So there you have it. There's some more understanding about buying and selling and the mark of the beast. And we'll continue a little more later.